Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Along with our Sunday worship, Founders Metropolitan Community Church offers a rich assortment of personal and spiritual enrichment classes, a variety of activities, and a number of support groups to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today, or pick up one of the connection flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with Founders more meaningful. Check out our website, mccla.org, and find us on Facebook. And join us in making Founders Metropolitan Community Church your one-stop spiritual portal. If this is your first Sunday at Founders, you are our guest, and we would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center and meet some new friends. We would love to hear your questions, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out the welcome tablets. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you are joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website and let us know that you are joining us. Founders Metropolitan Community Church is a place of diversity and welcome, a place of healing and acceptance, a place of deep spirituality and transformation, a place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles.
Loving God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to be in your presence, to know that we can rejoice and give gladness for the day that you have created. Allow your spirit to be among us, that we may know that the blessings that we receive can also be the blessings that we may give out. All of this in Christ's holy name, amen. amen. Please have a seat. Um, I am Reverend Alejandro Scotto, for those of you that don't know me. Uh, Reverend Dr. Kevin Downer um, and a slew of other people are in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, for our general conference. So for those of you who thought I was Reverend Kevin Downer, I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I'm just a tidbit shorter than he is. Just a tid, just a tad. So, um, so um, any first time visitors here? Yeah. Wonderful, welcome, welcome, welcome back there. I know you all have a choice of churches, uh, which churches to, to, to visit, so it's a pleasure to have you um, in the house of prayer for all people. I also want to give a, a shout out to our online visitors. Hello there. And if you're watching us from Victoria, we're glad that you can join us. And we hope that the blessings that are received here can also be received wherever you are. Because the reality is spirit has no limitation. And spirit reaches us exactly where we are at. So may the peace of Christ be with you. And let us share the peace of Christ with each other. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, beginning with the 22nd verse. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, Whatever you ask in prayer, believe it that you have received it, and it will be yours. Hear what the Spirit says today. Amen. This is my little mustard seed. My story's seldom told I've squandered my resistance For a pocket full of mumbles Such are promises All lies and jest Still a man hears what he wants to hear And disregards the rest mm -hmm. no more than a boy in the company of strangers in the quiet of a railway station running scared laying low seeking out the poorer quarters where the ragged Many 
it's the time I've been mistaken. Yes, and many times confused. Yes, and I've often felt forsaken. Fighter by his trade, and he carries the reminders of every blow that laid him out or cut him till he cried out in his anger and his shame. I am leaving, I am leaving, but the fighter still remains. I am leaving, I am leaving. 
spider still remains. Thank you so much for that beautiful song this morning. Thank you so much. Good morning, church. Good morning. First, I want to give a little shout out to my family that's here today. <laughs> Good to see you. I'm so grateful to be up here this morning as many of our clergy and church family are in Victoria, Canada today um, and this week for um, UFMC. UFMCC's General Conference all the way in Canada. So hello to all of you who might be watching right now. <laughs> um, as I get started, um, I have a few things I want you to think about. Have you ever had a thought about something that you knew in your heart was going to happen for you? This could be a job, the possibility of making new friends, getting something paid off, growing your relationship with God, or perhaps emotionally and mentally moving on after a bad situation. After you prayed about it, did you ever wonder and imagine what it may look like for you to see your thought turned into a reality? In the midst of our situations, as people of faith, sometimes we forget to visualize what we could do collectively or individually to press forward in times of trouble or doubt. When you know that the next thing that you should do is pray, you have to pause for a moment and say to yourself, what am I praying for? What do I need to do in order to see my prayer made manifest? This is where wonder, imagination, and belief come into play. Please join me in a brief moment of prayer. Creator God, let the words that come from my mouth and the meditations of my heart be a reflection of you. Thank you for your presence in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. So the context surrounding our scripture is taken from Mark chapter 11, verses 11 through 20. In this moment, Jesus enters Jerusalem and made his way into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was so late that day, he decides to continue on to Bethany with the 12 disciples. So Jesus noticed the condition of the temple courts and wasn't pleased and knew what he was displeased with. The temple courts should have been a place treated with more respect because the temple itself is a place for prayer. It wasn't supposed to be a place for selling and trading, which is what was happening at the time. Jesus knew what he needed to do. He knew what needed to be addressed, but it was too late for him, so he could just continues on for that day. That's like a parent walking into their child's room, and they see that it's a mess, but they're too mentally tired to deal with it in that moment, so they just put it off till like tomorrow morning or something. <laughs> it's just, you know, they don't want to deal with all of that. So... The next day, before Jesus leaves Bethany, he becomes really hungry and ends up spotting a fig tree. Now, Jesus' hunger can represent our thirst for needing and wanting change and growth in the midst of our pain and suffering. I don't know about you all, but when I'm hungry, I become very irritable my stomach hurts, I'm checking the clock all the time, and if I'm seeing something and I'm driving and I'm hungry, you know everything is appealing, anything. <laughs> so in this moment, Jesus decided to approach the fig tree because of its visible conditions. 
The fig tree had leaves, and in this case, the leaves come after the bearing of the fruit itself. So Jesus is walking over because he's hungry to the fig tree thinking there's fruit. But guess what? There's no fruit. That's like finding a cookie box at your grandmother's house, and when you open it, it's a bunch of sewing materials. <laughs> when we are hungry, when we are hungry for our next step, our next growing moment, our next forward moment, what do we see as personal things or possible surroundings that may be blocking our room for imagination and wonder? In this case, Jesus sees this situation, this fig tree. It's not serving its purpose, but now, since it's not serving its purpose, it is now also taking up space. Whether the fig tree was in season or not is not entirely what's important, but more so that it wasn't serving its purpose in season or out of season, therefore, it didn't need to exist. In the midst of Jesus' frustration, frustration, he curses the fig tree and says, may no one ever eat from you again. When I first heard this, it made me think about some teenager throwing some tantrum, talking to inanimate objects, throwing teddy bears across, the, across their rooms or something. Or me, when I'm in line at Starbucks for 40 minutes, and then when I get up to the front, they say, oh, we ran out of straws. <laughs> This ties directly into what happens next within the temple. As Jesus enters Jerusalem, he goes to the temple courts and begins driving out people who are buying and selling inside. He started turning over the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. At this moment, Jesus had had enough of the clutter. He had enough of the things blocking communication, and in this case, prayer, with the divine. When one wants to have thoughts of new possibilities, you can't have your best ones when you're still lingering on old situations. You have to clear them out. Jesus cleared out what wasn't serving the temple. He cleared out the clutter, the unnecessary, just like that fig tree in order to have the proper space to establish prayer or to have the proper mindset to be able to imagine and visualize effectively. In skipping down to verse 20 and 21, it says, in the morning, as Jesus and the disciples went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. So the people who were surrounding Jesus at the time that he had cursed it has, have now noticed that what he had put into action is actually happening. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you curse has withered. Jesus then uses this moment for a lesson. And the gist of what he says is, have faith in God. For if you say to the mountain in your life, throw yourself into the sea and you do not doubt it, but believe wholly that it will happen for you, then it will be done for you. Because whatever you ask for in prayer Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. What do the mountains in your life look like? Whether they be small situations in your work, personal, or church life. Whether it be finances, family issues, whatever it may be, what does your mountain look like? When you have faith and the ability to manifest, what does it look like to pray and believe that you have received it? to think of new ideas, new connections with people in the world, in your church? What does that look like when you believe that something is going to happen for you when you consider what you might have to do to receive it, whatever that might be? What are some of the creative ideas you can think of to accomplish the desires of your heart? Even though wander and imagination may be a place that can be uncomfortable this is also the place where God is working. It's the place right before your breakthrough. Wander and imagination are a part of the manifestation process because it's where you, your self-preparation comes from in order to obtain your promises. When in school or at work, 
you have training before reaching your next school goal or perhaps a management position. So God has to prepare you or train you in order to receive what's promised to you. And even though situations may seem like they take forever to accomplish, like for, for me, school, <laughs> you have to have faith. You have to believe that what you prayed about will be taken care of. If you believe within your heart, you'll know that no one can change the path that you must go. And know it's right because the time will come around when you say it's yours. Believe there's a reason to be. Believe that you can float on air. Oh, God is on your side. If you believe, I want you to believe. As God believes in you. Keep on believing until you see it manifested. Thank you.
Roger Owens. I'm on the board of this church. And first of all, I feel like a proud uncle up here. When God bestows gifts and we use our gifts, it is glorious. It is fabulous. It is full of spirit. Thank you, Patrice. For our online viewers, please go out, get some crackers, get some juice, so that you can commune with us as we do communion in just a few minutes. Our ministry volunteer of the week is Adrian Reyes, who volunteers every Saturday with the Hope Net Food Pantry, Laundry Love on the last Wednesday of every month, and often helps run cameras for the 130 Spanish service. Adrian, would you stand please? We would like to thank you. We would like to thank everyone who attended our newcomers brunch last Sunday, and a very special thank you to Ina, Johnny, Norm, Blake, Tony, Enrique, Joseph, Tammy, and especially Adrian for organizing, cooking, and making our newcomers brunch a fabulous affair. Saturday, July 16th is the day you need to put on your calendar. TransUnity invites you to a prom paradise. Starting at 7 p.m., our fellowship hall and theater level will be transformed into a tropical space to, to celebrate community, dance, and have fun. Tickets are on sale following each worship service at the table in front of the church and will be available at the door. Proceeds support the Christine Daniels Scholarship Fund. Come out and enjoy. It is with great sadness that we announce that on June 26th, Reverend Michael Nicholas died at a hospice in West Virginia. He was ordained as a MCC pastor in 1987 and was the interim pastor for MCCLA from late 2000 until early 2002. In addition to pastoring MCCLA, Reverend Nicholas pastored congregations in Miami, Boca Raton, Atlanta, and Portland. He served on the board of San, Fern of San Fernando Valley Chapter of Americans United for Separation of Church and State, and in 2002, authored Tugs of War, using the spiritual wisdom of the ages to get centered when life is pulling us apart. My fondest memory of Reverend Michael was Christmas Eve 2001. We um, were in Santa Monica Boulevard and as we pulled up to the church that evening, there was a spotlight. Reverend, Reverend Michael had gotten us a follow spot and it was circling around we had truly come to Hollywood. We were truly in West Hollywood. So now, let's pray that Reverend Michael Nicholas rests in peace and that his family is being held by God. Amen. Also, happy Canadian Day and happy Independence Day. Good morning, church. My name is Lee Fisk, and I'm the vice moderator for the board of directors. And um, uh, coming in this morning, you know, I, I won't lie to you here. I had a really, really personally uh, rough uh, week myself. And uh, this is where I come to lay my, my burdens down, 
you know. This is where I come to get the spiritual food that I need to continue. And uh, uh, I was a little nervous coming in this morning because I knew that Reverend uh, Kevin was not going to be here today. And uh, another recognition for Patrice because I heard exactly what I needed to hear today. And that's the glory of this church, you know. The faith that she renewed in my spirit, I can, I can face the week ahead, and that's what it's all about coming here and sharing and, and being personal with each other. I come from a very, very large family. I've got 10 brothers and sisters, and um, I was the baby of that family, so you can imagine the age here. And uh, the one thing that I remember and I'll always love about my mother is at five years old, I can remember being at church, and my mother was there ready to give what she had. To the church. My mom was steadfast in her faith and she loved the church and she knew the good and the blessings that came out of it. We would leave church, go home and have boiled potato skins for lunch for 10 people, but you know, she did what she felt was a responsibility on her behalf because she knew that that, that money, that gift was going to be used for God's blessing. And uh, you guys bless many, many people through these, through these donations. I mean, the ministries that we do in this church are beyond belief. You know, the, uh, we touch a lot of souls and a lot of people depend on us. And, and your gift is, is not going to go out of sight of God. He's going to see your blessing. And my mom believed that when you gave in secret, you were rewar rewarded openly. And uh, I think God has that in store for all of us. So please give generously.
Extend your hand for the blessing. <clears throat> Our Father, God, Mother, Creator, we love you, we thank you, we're blessed by you, we're given gifts, we're given direction, we're given hope, we're given faith. Let's lay down at the altar vengeance, let's lay down the altar hatred, bigotry, unkindness. We don't need any of that. The adversary loves that, we don't need it here. Bless us, Lord, bless these offerings. Give the blessings to those in our community that these offers go to. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. This morning, as we uh, pause uh, for our communion, we want to dedicate this uh, communion time uh, not only to the Christ we serve, but in loving memory of Reverend Michael Nicholas. Will you join me in prayer? God of wonder, God of imagination, God of belief. We come to this table, this table of grace, this table of mercy, this table of hope, this table of uncensored love. We come to it with gratitude, knowing how much it cost. Lord, could we in this moment just wonder what it would be like to see ourselves, to see the other, to see this world through your eyes? Lord, could we imagine as our preacher this morning, as she invited us to imagine what it would be to set aside those things that would be roadblocks and barriers from all that you have to give us. Lord, may you through Christ help our unbelief. Could we pause for a moment by the majesty and the mystical aspect of your spirit and just see and just glimpse into your heart oh God before creation you thought of us as Christ was born you thought of us as you prepared this table you thought of us and as Christ went and bared the burdens of this world on his body and in his spirit you thought of us and through the power of the resurrection, you thought of us. And as our pastor last week and as our preacher this morning encouraged us, you know us by name. You have a plan and a purpose for us. May we know that this morning. So we come and we ask for your presence to be, to fall afresh on us. May we set aside anything that would hinder us to enjoy this celebration this morning. In the many names of God, even Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I can only imagine what it would have been like that night before Jesus was to be betrayed. Now, I can only imagine that Jesus was not only surrounded by his uh, apostles, his disciples, but there were kids running, there were women, men, there were older folks, younger folks. This was a true family affair. <laughs> because I believe that's what Jesus was all about, bringing the family together. And Jesus brought people together around a common table and redefined it. That's what imagination does. It redefines your life. And he took bread and giving thanks, he blessed it. And in profound words, he simply said, this is my body broken for you. When you eat of it, simply remember me. Likewise, after supper, he 
took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and he shared it with his disciples. Hesitant, I believe, after having experienced the broken bread. But they believed in Jesus. They imagined with him. They imagined hope and understanding. And he took the cup and he lifted it up and he blessed it and gave thanks and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for all humankind so that human fault, so that sins may be forgiven. When you drink of this cup, simply remember me. God, we come before you once again in community and we, we pause and we reflect and we remember. May we use this time as you've offered it to us to remember you. And that by remembering you, your spirit would spark within us the hope of the fullness of Christ. May we be as we've sung, as we've heard in the message, as we've been guided through Reverend Alex. Could we be that light for the whole world would know? Bless these gifts. Unto you we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church, as well as all other MCCs around the world, we celebrate an open communion. You do not need to be a member of this church or any other church to receive communion here. You are welcome just as you are. So in a few minutes, the ushers will guide you to come forward for communion. For the feast has been prepared and all are welcome to receive.
Church family and friends, as you leave here today, I want you to think about the mountains in your life and know that they will be taken care of. Wander and imagine what it may look like for you to break through any circumstance and keep on believing until you see it manifested. Please rise and go in peace and please join us in our closing song. Thank <laughs> you.